surprised, I would say not quite surprising. It's predictable if you've been following uh, developments both around the world and also in Singapore. If you see what's been happening around the world and some of the things that have been happening in Singapore, I think this trend is uh, entirely predictable. Mr. Shanmugam, could the external environment and situation have perhaps influenced this? Uh, I, I would say it's partly, but not entirely the case. As I said, I think both external developments, but I think also some things that have been happening within Singapore. And uh, would it be fair to say there's always been some level of racism in the community? <laughs> Each time a person makes that statement, you know, I almost feel like saying, hello, uh, get real. You know, of course, uh, you name me a multiracial society that does not have racism from the very beginning, you know, decades ago, the time we became independent, even before that, I think government people in leadership positions have always recognized, I would put it in three ways. One, you know, that, uh, the uh, deep racial fault lines, you will see that exact phrase uh, being uh, used to describe many situations. Second, uh, re outright racism. And third, and I would not put this as racism, uh, racial preferences. Hmm? Preferences as to, uh, uh, in a number of areas, but uh, if you, have preferences, but you bring it out into the public square and you express it and you make it as a norm for others, then I think it crosses the line. But many people, certainly in the past, but even now, have preferences along racial lines, religious lines, and, uh, you know, not just in Singapore, but elsewhere. But it has, in some, it also crosses into racism, and it's always been the case. I myself use the word deep fault lines. I acknowledge racism exists. And in fact, many of the government policies proceed by accepting that there is both the racial preference as well as racism. And how do we mitigate that to make sure that meritocracy works and that people of all races have fair opportunities? Which... Racism exists, Go that's on, acknowledged. Sir. It's not new. Should we always call out racism, Minister? I think uh, we should, but we should do it sensibly. I mean, when it's in the public square, I think you should call out and you should, you should frown against it and you should take action where it breaches the law because it is cancerous, it's divisive, and it undermines the values of our society. So I think, yes, we should call it out. Um, what about Singapore's racial harmony? Uh, would you say it's on a knife edge then? No, I wouldn't put it quite that way. You know, for example, I chose my words very carefully. I've always said there is racism in Singapore, but we are a better society than most other multiracial societies that I know of. I mean, name me a society where there is no racism, which is multiracial. And I felt that we've made tremendous progress. There is racial harmony. Most people accept the norms of a multiracial society and we are making progress. The direction was positive. Direction has been positive, but recent events, I put a question mark and say, hello, uh, is the direction still the same, the positive, or are we uh, in danger of regressing? That's why in my Facebook post, I said, you know, are we sure that we are progressing in the right direction. So it's a direction that uh, I'm concerned about. But as of today, I won't say we are at knife stage. I think that will be over-dramatizing it. We are at an age where social media is such uh, a player when it comes to uh, getting people to see things and hear things. Has social media made things worse? I don't know that I will agree that it's made things worse. It's... Uh, I mean, you know, these events have happened, but perhaps they haven't gotten as much publicity in the past. 
as they get now, but I think we also must accept that uh, things are different now, people and racial sensitivities also heightened and there have been uh, some more uh, in your face incidents. Uh, I'm not quite able to say, well, you know, that's only because of social media. On Singapore but, you know, we shouldn't go away thinking this is new. Uh, that's why I made the point that racism has always existed. And I've said that years ago. Well, on Singapore Today, we're speaking with Law and Home Affairs Minister Keishan Mugam on CNA 938. Uh, Minister, some people, you know, on, on social media or even not on social media, they may feel emboldened to say such things in public. But uh, could we just um, uh, run through the fact that making racially incendiary remarks in public is something that's a chargeable offence? Tell us more. We have a fairly strict framework in Singapore, and uh, the legal provisions are quite tight. But you can't always look at the law as the solution in every situation. Uh, you look at it, the public prosecutor takes into account a broad variety of factors in deciding it. But a legal framework is one part of it, but the government and society have to work very hard to maintain harmony. You can't bring about harmony and racial tolerance and acceptance just by having laws and enforcing them. You need to do much more. So yes, the laws give the framework, the foundation, they are important, but you've got to go beyond that. And the answer is not every time something happens, you charge. When it is serious, investigations are conducted, then the Attorney General decides sometimes a warning Sometimes people are charged, but you are careful in the way you exercise that power. Do you think young and old people treat race relations differently these days? Uh, it's understandable. Uh, older people have uh, memories of uh, times when things were not so stable. Younger people have grown up in a situation where things have been stable in fact, people were talking about a post-racial society. Uh, I've never believed that we are in a post-racial situation. Uh, and you know, you've got to accept this, the younger people's perspective, and you need to find a way of engaging in issues of uh, relating to race and religion with the younger people in the way that they find acceptable. Um, you know, safeguarding racial and religious harmony is a cornerstone of Singapore. We were all taught the importance of it as early as primary school. Uh, given everything that's happening, what role does the government play? Extremely important role, but it's not just the government. I said it's society, it's people, it's institutions, it's the government. Uh, we are, as Singaporeans, what does that mean? I mean, it's not a subtraction from Singaporeans to say, I'm an Indian, I'm a Chinese, I'm a Malay, or, you know, sub-identities. Those are extremely important. They give us our cultural ballast. We are what we are. We recognize that. And that is extremely important. That gives us strength. But beyond that, we're also Singaporeans. And that is a common identity. And we have to emphasize that common identity, even as we recognize, accept, emphasize our individual identities. And we need to have that common vision to say, look, we want to build a system based on justice, equality, meritocracy, and where everyone can feel equal and everyone can feel protected. And the government has a huge role in articulating that vision and being fair. For example, you know, it's been said, oh, you know, we have this situation now. In the past, uh, the government investigated when people uh, uh, made, uh, uh, pointed out or called out racism. Now I looked at it and I laughed. You know, this sentiments are somewhat hypocritical because what do they mean? When they, when they see something that's racist or they think it's racist, they respond with racist remarks of their own. And we call that out. You don't respond to what you say is racism by your own racist remarks. 
by being racist yourself. So we call that out. If the government didn't call that out, say for example, if something happens in the, from a, a Chinese says something and an Indian or Malay responds with his own racist remark, and we don't deal with that, then next time when someone from the majority community does it, has there been rule of law and can the government go and say, no, we are going to take action? Rule of law means the law applies to all majority and minority equally. <laughs> Excuse me. So have we applied the law fairly? Do people believe that we are applying the law fairly across all races? Is everyone protected? Then if they believe that, then people will say, I accept the operation of the law. Minister, do you think some people say the pledge without reflecting on the pledge? Uh, it's very, you know, you ask me a question like that, thousands of people recite the pledge. How am I going to give an answer? But I think the pledge is important. It stands for certain ideals. It emphasizes it. The fact that we recite it, I think, adds to the collective consciousness. It's important. Thank you, Minister Law and Home Affairs Minister K. Shanmugam.